Number 39, sketch the boundary surface of a dx squared, uh, y squared, and a py orbital. Be sure to show and label the axes. Okay, so now we're actually drawing what these orbitals look like. So remember, the, ori uh, bleh, the, the orbital just comes from the orientation. Okay, so how these actual orbitals look. So for this one, I'm going to say dx squared, y squared, and then we'll draw like a little line down here, and then py. Now, I don't know if you guys see my drawing thus far, but it's pretty wicked. Just kidding. <laughs> my drawing skills aren't really that good. That's why I'm a science person and not really an artist. But we have to label the axes. So when we're doing the uh, boundary surfaces and when we're drawing the orbitals, they always draw them in a little bit different way than what you guys know as far as your math axes. Usually in math, right, you have the x-axis and the y-axis here. But for these orbitals, there's three dimensions to it, so they have to twist it a little bit. So we can't draw that. What they do is they draw, actually, the one that you know, actually, I'm going to draw like this. The one that you know as the y-axis is really, ooh, that was that was a little awful. The one that you know as the y-axis is really the z-axis. And then they kind of do a crisscross. So there's one going this way, and that's the y. And then there's one going this way, and that's the x. So memorize this axes, because this is always what you're going to draw and base off of your drawings for the orbitals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw one and then just copy it over. So we'll do a big one like that. We have one line like this. We have one line like this. And then we have them going up and we have to label the axes. So this would be Z, Y, and X. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of magic. I'm just going to copy and paste. Look at that. Save this some time. Okay, so let's do the PY first because it's easier. We should always start easy and then work our way up. Now they want specifically the PY. So that means that the orbitals would be lying on the Y axis. So all you got to do is find the Y axis and that's here. And just know that in the center, so in the center of here, in the center of here, and in the center of here, that's where the nucleus lies. So remember, the outside of the nucleus is where the electrons are. And the P, in general, are the dumbbells. So they extend kind of like as balloons out of the um, y-axis, or you could think of it as like a dumbbell. So here, I'll do it in different colors. One would be going like this, and I'll make that a little bit exaggerated. Do you see how it's on the y-axis? And then the other one has to be going on the y-axis, but in the other way. And we represent them as two different colors because one is technically in the positive direction and one is in the negative direction. So that's why we always list two sides as two different colors. And that would be the answer for this one. So PY, they just told us, draw it in the Y direction. It's a dumbbell, or you could see the two balloons, but that's it. Now we have to draw this one, the big boy, the D, right? And they tell us that it's X squared minus Y squared. The squared represents two, all right? So just means that you're going to be drawing the X twice and the Y twice. And we have the same type of connotation. So... Let's do the x first. Okay, well, the x-axis is here. So here I go. I have one like this for the x. And now for this one, for the d's, you draw the same letter as the same color. So that's the difference between the p's and the d's. The different letters, x versus y, will be different colors. So I'm just going to say x was the blue, and the y is going to be the yellow. So that's one difference between the D and the P. So in this case, both X's are blue, and now you switch over your colors to the Y. And it's going in this direction, so up top and down below. And there you go. That's the orbital shape 
of the dx squared y squared as opposed to the py. The d has four different balloons, technically, and the p has only two balloons away from the nucleus, if you want to think of it that way. But that's how you guys would draw it. So memorize these axes. That will help you out a lot when you're drawing. And yeah, practice, practice, practice. There's also a chart in your textbook that gives you all the drawings as well. So everything is there. You can study that as well. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully your art skills are better than mine. Um, I'll see you guys all in the next question. And hey, if you want to subscribe, that would help our channel out a lot. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the support. See you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.